Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Balaba Giri Badadhari Gopi Jana Balaba Giri Badadhari Yasoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yasoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tida Banachari Yamuna Tida Banachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Balaba Giri Badadhari Yasoda Nandana Bhaja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Banachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jayam Vishnupad Paramahansa Padavadikacharya Sajvidas at the Shishimad is divine grace Esi Bhaktivedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai Iskand Bibidi Founder Charya Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai Jayam Vishnupad Paramahansa Padavadikacharya Sajvidas at the Shishimad is divine grace Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaja Ki Jai Ananta Guri Vaishnavrinda Ki Jai Nama Charya Shila Hadadas Thakko Ki Jai Prem Sekaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhuna Chananda Shri Advaita Gadara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Shri Shri Radha Krishna Go Gopinath Shama Kunda Radha Kunda Giri Gopadhan Ki Jai Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai Nabarip Marpo Dham Ki Jai Ganga Jamuna Maya Ki Jai Tulasi Devi Maharani Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Samaveda Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai All glorious to the assembled devotees All glorious to the assembled devotees All glorious to the assembled devotees All glorious to Shri Shri Guru and Gadanga All glorious to Srila Prabhupada Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 7, Chapter 8, Text Number 5. And the class goes to 8.30. That's questions and answers and everything finished. Right? Okay. okay, good. And there's a clock there. Great. Shri Haranyi Kasipur Uvacha. He Durvanita Mandatman. He Durvanita Mandatman. Kula Beda Karadama Kula Beda Karadama Stabam Mach Chasan Od Vritam Stabam Mach Chasan Od Vritam Nesye Twaja Yamashayam Nishye Twaja Yama Shayam Shri Haranyika Sipur Uvacha He Durvanita Mandatman Kula Beda Karadama Stabdam Mach Chasan Odvritam Nishye Twaja Yama Shayam Others?
Shri Harani Kasipu Uvacha. The blessed Harani Kasipu said, Hey, O Durvinita, most impudent, Manda, sorry, Manda Atman, O stupid fool, Kula Beda Kava Kakara, who are bringing about a disruption in the family. Adama, O lowest of mankind, Stabdam, most obstinate, Matsasana, from my ruling, Udvritam, going astray, Neshye, I shall bring, Twa, you, Adya, today, Yamashayam, to the place of Yamaraj, the superintendent of death. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Hirani Kasipu said, O oh, most impudent, most unintelligent disruptor of the family, O oh, lowest of mankind, you have violated my power to rule you, and therefore you are an, you are an obstinate fool. Today I shall send you to the place of Yamaraj. Purport. Hirani Kasipu condemned his Vaishnav son Pallad for being durvinita, ungentle, uncivilized, or impudent. Srila Vishvana Chakravati Thakur, however, has derived a meaning from this word, durvinita, by the mercy of the goddess of learning, Saraswati. He says that du refers to this material world. This is confirmed by Lord Krishna in his instruction in Bhagavad Gita that this material world is dukalayam, full of uh, material conditions. V means vishesha, specifically, and uh, nita means brought in. By the mercy of the Supreme Lord, Pallad Maharaj was especially brought to this material world to teach people how to get out of the material condition. Lord Krishna says, yada yada hidarmasha glanir bhavati bharata, when the entire population, or part of it, becomes forgetful of its own duty, Krishna comes. When Krishna is not present, the devotee is present. But the mission is the same, to free the poor conditioned souls from the clutches of maya that chastises them. Srila Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur further explains that the word mandatman means manda, very bad or very slow in spiritual realization. As stated in Srimad Bhagavatam 1.1.10, Manda Sumanda Matayo Manda Bhagya Manda Bhagya. Uh, Pallad Maharaj is the guide of all the Mandas, or bad living entities, who are under the influence of Maya. He is the benefactor even of the slow and bad living entities in this material world. Kula Beta Karadama, by his actions, Pallad Maharaj made great personalities who established big, big families seem insignificant. 
Everyone is interested in his own family and in making his dynasty famous. But Pallad Maharaj was so liberal that he made no distinction between one living entity and another. Therefore, he was greater than the great Prajapatis who established their dynasties. The word stabyam means obstinate. A devotee does not care for instructions of the asuras. When they gave instructions, he, when, sorry, when they give instructions, he, be, he remains silent. A devotee cares about the instructions of Krishna, not those of demons or non-devotees. He does not give any respect to a demon, even though the demon be his father. Much chasano dritvam. Pallad Maharaj was disobedient to the orders of his demoniac father. Yama Shayam, every conditioned soul, is under the control of Yamaraj, but Harani Kasipu said he considered Pallad Maharaj his deliverer, for Pallad would stop Harani Kasipu's repetition of birth and death. Because Pallad Maharaj, being a great devotee, was better than a yogi, Harani Kasipu was to be brought among the society of bhakti yogis. Thus, Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur has explained these words in a very interesting way as they can be interpreted from the side of Saraswati, the mother of learning. Omagana Tamananda Shajananjana Shalakaya Chakshun Imilitamiana Tasmai Shugadave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manobi Stam Stapitamiana Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Dirati Swapadanti Kam. So the thing, first thing of interest that uh, occurred to me was uh, how is it that Harani Kasipu is being addressed here as the blessed Harani Kasipu. I didn't, huh? I didn't catch that until I was just reading the word for translations and preparing for the class. I didn't see that. But I think I remember hearing something about it. Well, you know, he's going to get killed here pretty soon. It's coming up and it's, you know, by Lord Nishringadev. And when he gets killed, uh, he doesn't go to hell. Pallad Maharaj begs for his deliverance and there's a little exchange there between Pallad Maharaj and Rani Kasi, um, and Lord Nishringadev, and somebody explains that, uh, you know, if somebody's a pure devotee, so many generations before and after get delivered. So Harani Kasipu got, um, you know, he got purified by being killed by Lord Nishringadev. So I think it's in, this is before it happened, but that, that would be my speculation at this point, because I said I didn't catch this until I just kind of started, read, read the word for a translation. It's in anticipation of the fact that he's going to get killed by Lord Nishringadev. And, yeah? The mic. the mic. It's already, everybody knows the answer to this one. Well, this fir first came up, you know, I noticed this. I hadn't noticed it before. Back when Hiranyakashipu first starts questioning Pallad, the first time he's quoted, it's Sri Hiranyakashipu Ravacha. Now, I don't think it says in the, in the uh, word for words, but the blessed Hiranyakashipu. This, this is like... It it well, yeah, the blessed it says it there, Kasipu but said. I'm telling you, in the, in the Bhagavatam, it comes oh, yeah. up way before when he's asking Pallad, what, what did you learn today? When he's first quoted, you know, it, it says, Sri Hiranyakashipu Varacha. I said, Sri Hiranyakashipu Varacha? Why Sri? And I, and I went back and I, and I said, is, is that just a thing that they say Sri? And so I checked, even for demons... So I looked up Kamsa when he talks. There's no Sri. It's, it's special for Ranyakashipu. And uh, I think it has to do with the fact that he's ultimately, you know, Jai and Vijay. That that's, that's going to be his destiny. Because, you know, that, that may be uh -huh. part of it. That he's, he's special, even though he's a real demon, a big demon. It's just a, a uh, temporary covering. And one of the things is so that. Krishna can enjoy fighting, right? Vishnu right. can enjoy fighting, you know. In, in. <laughs> did you, just out of curiosity, did, did you ever run into like any of the acharyas commenting upon that? That sounds like no. Mm, okay. I I can look further, but uh, it it is it is kind of a far out thing that uh, I, it, it struck me when I first saw it before, and is striking you exactly the same way. Why, Sri, 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 Sri you Yeah, yeah that's interesting. <laughs> okay, so moving on. Um, so then. Now, something that should be uh, taken into consideration, I think it's significant, is that when this happened, when Pallad Maharaj was, when, sorry, when Harani Kasipu was killed by Lord Nishringadev, Pallad Maharaj was just five years old. I, I kind of looked it up. I think it's probably stated someplace. I've heard Prabhupada say it, and I looked it up, and he's five years old. So that's pretty young. Five years old um, is going into kindergarten. Here in America, you start kindergarten when you're five years old. And I remember when I was five years old, um, you know, you're pretty spaced out. You're a kid, and you. I don't know that I would have been. If, if my father talked to me like this when I was five years old, 
I don't even know if I would have been able to understand what he was saying. I mean, oh, most impudent, most unintelligent disruptor of the family, a lowest of mankind, you have violated my power to rule, and therefore you are an obstinate fool. Today I shall send you to the place of... I don't even know if what I... I don't even know if I would have known what he was talking about at five years old. Now, what to speak of um, being able to go to school and be a leader and organize the kids, you know, to listen to you and give them some message that inspires them so much that they change their entire world view, right? You know, sometimes you don't stop and think about this stuff, but it's, I mean, it's interesting, right? Yeah, go ahead. Building there, it's not like he's speaking beginner's uh, Sanskrit, you know, it's just the same concepts and the whole thing that you'll find Sutta Goswami speaking or anything, you know. No, right. And they died in the world demons, you know, they're all coming from totally demoniac parentage because this is the, you know, the in-group of Harani Kasipu, the other, his minister's kids and stuff like that at the, at the Gurukul. And Balad Maharaj has converted them all <laughs> into devotees at five years old. It's like, what? But anyway, that's pretty far out too. Um, but, so how do we understand this? Well, one thing, it didn't happen in the Kali Yuga. It happened, wait, what, I guess Satya Yuga? This is, this past time took place way back. So people were more intelligent then. That's one way to understand it. And the other way is, as mentioned here in the, in the purport, that, uh, where does it say here? Pallad Maharaj was especially brought to this material world to teach people how to get out of the, uh, how to get out of the material condition. So it's a pastime. You know, this is like Krishna's pastime. So, you got license to do for far out things to happen. That's, you know, it's kind of unusual, but okay, this is Krishna's pastimes. And Pallad Maharaj was a pure devotee who was sent here to, uh, sent here to, uh, brought here to teach people how to get out of the material condition. And uh, the last sentence of that same paragraph, Prabhupada says, when Krishna is not present, the devotee is present, but the mission is the same, to free the poor conditioned souls from the clutches of maya, that chastises them. So maya is chastising the conditioned souls. Mean, bad maya, right? No. Maya is just a servant. You know, she's doing a job, just like the police. You know, they do a job. Uh, they have to capture criminals and, and punish them. They're part of the system anyway. You know, the, there's the police and the courts and the this and the that. But, uh, you know, she's, it, maya is just doing a service here. She's actually, a, sometimes she's referred to as Vaishnavi. That's a name for Maya, Vaishnavi. So she's a great Vaishnava. Um, so she's, yeah, she is chastising the conditioned souls because they, I won't say we, because we're hopefully not included any longer, but they deserve it. You know, criminals deserve to be chastised. And criminals can't expect any mercy from the government until they, they have to uh, agree to stop their criminal activity and, you know, surrender, cooperate with what the government's saying. Then they can possibly, you know, expect some mercy. So it is an analogy. Conditioned souls, if they want, if they expect some mercy from Krishna, from God, they have to first stop their nonsense. You have to surrender. You have to surrender. You know, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, right at the end, the most famous instruction, Sarvadamam prichaja mame kam sadanam vraja aham tvam sarva papebhyo moksha yasyami masuja. Abandon all varieties of religion. Just give up your criminal activities and surrender to me. I'll protect you. Then, then, I'll protect you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. So about two weeks ago, in, um, every Sunday in Los Angeles, they play a lecture of Srila Prabhupada. So in the lecture a couple of weeks ago, Prabhupada gave an interesting analogy um, to help uh, to explain that verse, you know, and he said it's like um, in India they have bankruptcy. Well, you know, he didn't know at that point whether they had it here in America. Of course, we do. And he says if somebody gets in a lot of debt, they can go to the court and they can appeal to a judge and say, hey, you know what? I kind of screwed up. I'm in over my head. I don't know what to do. I can't. I've got creditors hounding me day and night. I'm paraphrasing now. Probably didn't exactly say it like this. I got creditors hounding me day and night. I don't get. I can't sleep. You know. I can't get a moment's peace. Is there, can you help me? I don't. I can't pay these people. I, 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 this is what I've got here. You can. You can take control of it and just please take charge of my life. My. You know. My financial life. And if the person. You know. They. They get it. They. The courts are no fools. You know. The judge is no fool. They investigate the situation. And if they feel that this person is, you know, coming forward with a genuine case, you know, and, and they're not trying to 
deceive or cheat the court in any way, you know, the, 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 the judge will declare that person, okay, we've checked you out and everything, yeah, you seem like you're elig a legitimate candidate, an eligible, legitimate eligible candidate for bankruptcy, we pronounce you bankrupt. And the judge hands the thing over to a trustee. So in this case, the judge is like Krishna, the trustee is like the spiritual master. The trustee takes over and the, the trustee takes control of all your assets you know, when you're bankrupt, all your, you know, your bank accounts, your property, everything, everything you, you own, you thought, you, well, you did own it, at, no, you no longer own, the trustee owns everything. And then the trustee distributes your assets in favor of the creditors. But, you know, you get, the trustee is not as a human being and treats you like a human being, and, you know, they don't kick you out of your home and put you on the street or anything like that. You, just, you get, you know, you're able to continue living, but, all your, you know, the benefit of all your work or whatever your assets goes to pay off the creditors. And of course, if you, uh, if, it's, if it's detected or discovered that you were cheating or lying in the bankruptcy, then you, you know, forget it, it's all off, the deal's off, you know, you're, you're stuck with whatever you uh, owed and you could even go to jail, you see? So it's, it's like that, Prabhupada gave that analogy that surrendering to Krishna is like that, it's like petitioning or uh, for a bankruptcy, you see? Because, you know, else in the Bhagavatam, it's described that we have uh, debts. You know, when, in this material world, we have debts. It's, what to speak of reactions to sinful activities? Well, that, it's related. You know, there's that verse, Devarshi Bhutapta Patrunan, and I, I don't know the rest of the Sanskrit, <laughs> forgive me, but it's, we have, you know, we have debts to the demigods, to the sages, to the forefathers to the humanity in general, to the other living entities, et cetera. I, I might have left that one or two. But we have debts all over the place, you know, and if you don't repay your debts, that's, there's, inf there's reaction for that, you see? So basically, one of the things is that, you know, when you surrender to Krishna, Krishna's saying, you surrender to me, you know, as you, okay, you're declaring bankruptcy, okay, and it's legit, and I take control, I take charge of your life, and you just cooperate and do what I say, and, I'll deliver you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. So it's like, it's a bit of a, it's a deal. But you have to keep your contract. You know, if, if you default on the contract, then it's off. The deal's off. That's, that's, that was my understanding of it. So I thought that was an interesting analogy that you know, Prabhupada gave in that, in that class. I probably perhaps elaborated a little bit more than he did, but but, you know, I think that it was, it, it, and I never thought of it in that light, but I thought it was a really, you know, interesting way to think of surrender to Krishna. So moving on. So it, it's explained here, further on in the uh, purport, it says here, uh, the word stabyam means obstinate. A devotee does not care for the instructions of asuras. When they give instructions, he remains silent. A devotee cares about the instructions of Krishna, not those of demons or non-devotees. He does not give any respect to a demon, even though the demon be his father. So there's a good reason for that. There's a good reason for that. And the reason is because a lot of times the demons don't know what they're talking about. See, so there's a good reason not to, uh, you know, pay, be careful about the, their instructions and everything like that, because they don't know what they're talking about. I'm going to give you an example, okay, and then I'm going to use it as an analogy to, to expand upon that point. Um, we go to colleges, right, and practically, not every day, but at least once a week, maybe more, probably twice at the week, three, maybe even three times a week, we get approached, once we set up our table and everything like that, we get approached by either a uh, law enforcement officer or an administrator from the college informing us that it's okay, we're, you know, we're happy, it's good, your guys are okay to be here, but you know you can't ask for any money. There can't be any tr exchange of money here, right? And, uh, you know, they're always telling us that, right? Almost on a regular daily basis. And um, so, the fa and we, so most times, we, a lot of times, we, ha we have to feel it out. You just kind of say, oh, yeah, 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 because we know that they can just walk away, and then that's all there is to it. They, just, they, they did their job. They came and verbally told us, and they, you know. But sometimes, you know, we have to get into it with them. We have to explain to them that, well, I I'll say something like, oh, really? So did the Supreme Court change their ruling? 
You know, and then they go, what do you mean? Well, I mean, the Supreme Court, according to the Supreme Court, we are allowed to both ask for donations and sell the, the books. This is a public school, right? We're on public property, correct? And they go, yeah, this is public. I said, well, according to the Supreme Court. And then they go, well, no, and they try to argue. But then Magendra, uh, our god brother, um, yeah. He did this little homework for us. He's, I'll, I'll read it to you. It's very interesting. It says, uh, the Supreme Court explained that solicitation of funds can be, cannot be totally prohibited to persons who are distributing religious literature. This is an excerpt from a, uh, the, what's it called when the judge gives his ruling? ruling. Yeah, this is the, the ruling of the judge. The state does not dispute the oral and written dissemination of Krishna's religious views and doctrines is protected by the First Amendment, nor does it claim that this protection is lost because the written materials sought to be distributed are sold rather than given away or because contributions or gifts are solicited in the course of propagating the faith. Our cases indicate as much. And then it states all the precedent cases, which are like one, two, three, there's about four or five precedent cases. So I, I just have him read that. We either read it to him or we have him read it. I hand him this piece of paper and I say, please read that. You know, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, it works. Uh, it stops them in their tracks, you know, uh, on... Um, on it was Monday when we first got here, we were at UCSD, and we had some irate administrator approaches at the table and trying to tell us, you know, hey, you can't be asking for money. And, um, you know, it was kind of like a heated exchange between me and him because he came in a, a certain mood that kind of set me off, you know, and I kind of got into it with him. But I, I gave him this piece of paper, and I said, you don't know what you're talking about. He said, what do you mean? He says, you, you, the UC, I'm represent. I'm one of the UC systems, and you, know, you think, are you trying to tell me we don't know what we're doing? I said, yeah. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're doing. Here, take that and read it. And uh, he said, well, anyway, you're a liar because I asked you, when I approached you, I asked you, um, are you asking for donations or asking any specific amount? And you said no. And I said, well, I said, well I'm 50% liar because you, know, you asked me two things. And we are asking for donations, but we aren't asking for a specific amount. You know, and he, and, he, and he tried to get me on the, it was a reserved area, and we hadn't made a reservation, but there was nobody there anyway, so it's public property. But anyway, he walked off, and that was early. That's what, that was kind of like shortly after we just got there, and he didn't come back. So, you know, I thought, Jai Magendra. <laughs> you know, it worked. So the point is, though, that um, he was a nice guy. He was, looked like, you know, my age, a little younger, and looked like a, you know, together, intelligent guy, but he didn't know what he was talking about. And they don't know what they, the, the police and the, and the administrators, they might mean well. I guess they're just trying to protect the students and whatever. But they don't know what they're talking about. The fact of the matter is that we do know what. You know, we, we are allowed to ask for both, ask for donations and even sell the books if we want to. You know, that's the law. So in the same way, as I said, I was going to make use this as an analogy and broaden it out. Uh, the materialists, the leaders in the world today, they don't know what they're talking about. They don't know. They, they don't know what life's all about. They don't know how to tell people how to live. They're doing it. They're telling us how to live, but they don't know what they're talking about. What's that? I'm, I have to apologize. I'm very rusty on my Sanskrit. There's a verse in the Bhagavad Gita which says that the Vedas are like the emanation of Krishna's breathing. Maybe it's in a purport. <clears throat> it's in the third chapter. I think it's in a purport, the 315, about how the, you know, the Vedas are actually Krishna. So the Vedas, the knowledge about how to live, that's coming from Krishna. Right. And uh, that, you know, that that that's meant to be understood by brahmanas and brahmanas are meant to instruct chatriyas. Chatriyas are supposed to be like the leaders, you know, your presidents and your this and that prime ministers. And, and they're supposed to know how human beings are, are you know, supposed to live. But they get that knowledge. The leaders are supposed to get it from the brahmanas and the brahmanas are getting it from the supreme personality of Godhead. Today, in contemporary human society, you don't have chatriyas, actual chatriyas. You have sudras that are acting, in, you know, in the roles of chatriyas. It's almost like that, you know, in that past time with Maharaj Prick and Kali. Kali was dressed like a, a king, but he wasn't a king. You know, he was dressed like a king, but he wasn't a king. And in the same way now, you have chatriyas. They're in the position, you know, they're, they're calling the shots and everything, but they don't know what they're doing because they haven't been directed by Brahmins who, and because there are no Brahmins and those Brahmins haven't been directed, you know, receiving the knowledge from a higher source from Krishna, basically. So you have a situation where 
you know, yeah, of course we don't want to listen to their instructions because they don't know what they're talking about. We should be instructing them. You see, and once again, here's the analogy. Just like on the college campuses, when we get approached by the police and the administrators, they're coming to tell us, you know, what we can and can't do. And really what has to happen, sometimes we remain silent because we know they're just going to walk away and we won't see them again anyway, and we just carry on with what we want to do. But sometimes we have to square off and tell them, no, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. This is what we can and can't do. And that's, what we, that's actually our role as devotees. We're in a situation now where the leaders of the world don't know what they're talking about. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know what life's all about. They really don't. They really don't. And, and we have to just not only not listen to them, but we have to tell them, no, you're wrong. This is how you should be living. You know, Sarvadam Amprachajam, Mame comes you know, We have to put it in a language that they can understand, but we have to tell them, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what life's all about. You can't be telling people how to live and how not to live because you don't know. You don't know yourself. You know, it's really, and it's really, man. I'll give you an example of something I say to Christians when they come up to my table. Sometimes you get Christians that are a little bit, you know, uh, aggressive and, and they really want to get into it with you, you know? So, uh, I, you know, this is my kind of spin on, like, you know, Papa's thing about Jesus Christ said, thou shalt not kill. I, I present it in this way. <clears throat> I say, okay, look, let's, let's uh, take a hypothetical situation. Let's say um, Jesus Christ showed up here today on the college campus, and he came and he, and he said, hey, you know, um, I would like to, like to kind of just get an idea what's going on. I heard about slaughterhouses. Could you take me to a slaughterhouse and let's check it out? And we said, okay, sure. And we put him in the car and we drove to Harris Ranch, the, you know, the, that smelly slaughterhouse that you could smell as you're driving up on the five through Sacramento. When you get close to Bakersfield, you can smell it from miles away. And uh, anybody familiar with that? Yeah, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so we took him to that place and we showed him what was going on. They said, you, you know, I say to the Christian, I say to the person I'm talking to, so do you think he, you know, he would see what's going on there and he would just kind of go, oh, okay, that's interesting, you know? Or do you think he would go, whoa, what the heck is this all about, you know? I mean, I can't, I can't believe you're doing this. It's the latter. You know, they all agree, yeah, he'd be shocked, he'd be appalled. He wouldn't just think it was okay, you know? I mean, 95% 90, 90, of them at least react like that. And uh, so, you know, they understand that, wow, we're, you know, I'm trying to help them saying we're off. We don't know, yeah, some, that, the, that, that something's, there's this, there's something's wrong here, you see? So that, that's the point, you know, is, uh, if you just have to look at what's going on in contemporary human society and you can understand that um, they don't know what they're doing, you know? I mean, slaughterhouses, that's, that's insanity. I mean, okay, Prabhupada said, I just listened to a lecture last night where Prabhupada said, we have no particular, you know, bone to pick with the, with the, uh, the meat eaters, you know, or the, the people, the animal, because, you know, you have to eat, that, that's a law of nature, but when there's other kind of foods available, when you can maintain your body in a different way, then of course you do that, you know, it's for like an emergency situation. It's not required in this day and age. So, I mean, there's just, that's just one example. There's just example after example after example of how human society is way off. So, as devotees, um, we've got to become as convinced about that as, as Chaitanya Shringa and I are convinced about we have a right to be on the campuses and you know, ask for a donation or sell the book. We have to be really convinced about that these people are in total illusion. They, you know, they might mean well, whatever. They don't know what they're talking about. They don't know how to live. Therefore, they don't know how to tell anybody else how to live. We do know how to live. Not that we're, you know, anything great or, but we just, we've been told, we've been taught by Prabhupada. We've been taught by the predecessor Acharyas. We've, you know, got this knowledge that's coming down to the Sipak succession, originally from Krishna, the Supreme Personality of God. So we do know something, you know, and so we have to be, you know, confident that they don't know what they're doing. They, they, you know, and, and just and we have to go out there with these books and with that confidence. And Papa said bold and enthusiastic preaching. He was very pleased by bold and enthusiastic preaching. That was one of the, uh, a major criteria for when he picked the different people, you know, after 11 Acharyas or 11 Ritviks at that time. But, um, you know, that was a big criteria, bold and enthusiastic preaching. They had taken risk for spreading the Krishna conscious movement. So Papa was pleased by that. He liked that mood of bold and enthusiastic preaching. So we have to go out there and have to confront the people and, and just in a way that's kind of will work. You know, you want to be practical. 
uh, communicate to them that hey, you know what? You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you how, you know. You, you got the you, you got it wrong. You, you got the wrong understanding about life and how to live it. Here, this is the correct understanding about life and how to live it. Please take this, read it, think about it, you know, and et cetera. And that's what, you know, as devotees, that's a really important part of our job description. I mean, we definitely have to chant 16 rounds and follow the four the principles and read the books and come to the, you know, that's all there. But definitely Prabhupada wanted, um, wanted devotees to preach you know, he wanted people, uh, devotees, to go out there and challenge. We have to challenge. Papa did. Papa challenged the materialistic worldview on many different fronts. You know, just like a war, there's many different fronts. Papa challenged them, challenged the politicians. He challenged the scientists. He challenged the bogus religionists. He challenged the pseudo, uh, you know, yogis, he, right? On and on. I mean, there's probably a few more I'm missing, but he challenged. And we have to, you know do that follow i mean he would like it he would be very pleased if we um, take i mean I, i'm talking i don't do it my i i do to some small degree going to college campus and trying to distribute the books but i mean it's it's not easy but that's i think that's you know prop i wanted that for sure and, and was pleased when devotees um, did like that so i don't know what to, 820 I'll, I'll stop there does anybody have any question or comment please i hope i get some feedback yeah javita to it, but you asked me about a Chanaka shlok when I was chanting Japa. I don't know if you... If, oh, yeah, Chanaka yeah. <laughs> And uh, I didn't have it here, so I went back home where I have all kinds of archives, and sure enough, I had Chanaka shlok, and I read all the Chanaka shloks I had, but I couldn't find the one you're looking for. It's, it was uh, that one should live... How, how did it go, basically? The well, idea? If you want to be, a, 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 be happy in the material world, you should think that you should live forever. But if yeah. you want to be successful in spiritual life, you should be thinking, I'll do- I could die today. Die at any moment, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I, I glanced through all of the ones that I have, and not, none of those struck a bell. But I just wanted to let you know that. And I also found that uh, quote that you were looking for from the uh, third, third chapter. Take the third, yeah. And yeah just, I think it's in the purport, 315. I yeah. think it's in the purport. And it's quoted here, uh, 315, right? The breathing of the supreme, the Vedas are the breathing of the supreme personality of Radha. Yeah, it was fascinating. But what, but one of the things that that uh, I mean impressed me about your class is this idea of like confronting them and telling them they don't know what they're talking about. I mean that was you know I mean that that's that's basically the whole thrust of our you know basic thrust of our shastra right. is that. They know what they're talking about as far as weaving a, a, a civilization that's suicidal and is sure to bring suffering to millions of people. You know, they're, they're not hoping for that, but that's the result of it. It's worse than just ignorance. It's, it's being ignorant and insisting that you have the knowledge and, and influencing millions of people. So, it's, so you're, you're right. The whole, it's a confrontation. It, it, it really what it is, is that we are, we are attempting to uh, spread knowledge that will just basically you know save the, the material life but also give people a chance to uh, find, achieve the goal of life which is ending this life here entirely and going back to God and people have no idea what that is and the corruption of religion you know I mean the, the prosperity gospel where you have these mega churches where people are just praying like anything and the, and the, the, the leaders of the of the church are flaunting their opulence. You have, you know, how do you participate? You have to plant the seed. Send in your hundred dollars, and then that will come back to you. Jesus will give back to you, you know, a thousand times. But you got to send it in, and they're all bamboos to do that, and it's just such a corruption. So that, you know, that that's that's one of the, the main failings of the modern civilization. So this whole effort, you know, uh, distributing the books and preaching and maintaining the temples and, and of course, spreading the chanting is pushing back on the, the evils of the Kali Yuga. And thank you for being a major general in that fight, Adi Bo. Thank you. Jaitanya <clears throat> Singh? First of all, I would like to thank you, Brigupati Prabhu, for an amazing class. To me, I think it was one of your best classes I've ever attended. And uh, 
Um, something just what Dravita Prabhu uh, mentioned about how um, leaders are corrupt of other religions. And, you know, I think this is what we're facing, actually being out on the street. People see us as the same people who is just chasing them for money, you know, when we're trying to deliver the books. I don't, don't get a, an idea how important it is to, you know, make that sacrifice, you know. And nowadays, people are the most attached to their money. I mean, that's kind of, you know, that's a sacrifice. If they make that sacrifice, it's going to benefit them, see? And we also have to educate them on that part. And I get a lot of people in situations like day by day where people, like yesterday, there was a girl, she, she gave like a small donation, she got a book, but she all of a sudden, she got very upset. She started to saying the people around that we, we just there for money and stuff like that, you know. So, yeah, you're right, it's there, but uh, in our consciousness, in our uh, view, it's different, and we're trying to educate people on that. So I just wanted to um, um, add something to what you just said. It really resonated with me, and I wanted to thank you for your class. Thank you, Brigapati Prabhu. Hi. Hare Krishna. Vijay. Thank you, Brigapati Prabhu, for a wonderful lecture. I want to clarify about the challenging spirit. How much of that should we involve in our preaching when we distribute books? Because sometimes it also can kind of get in the way and distract us from the main purpose. You got to do it intelligently. You know, I, I, I'm always dramatizing, but you got to do it in a way that's going to work. And then you got to figure out how to do it in such a way that your, uh, you, you know, your, your objective is furthered. Don't shoot yourself in the foot, you know, don't kind of get into a big argument with somebody and then they just kind of, you know, get all aggressive back and you, you got to, you know, Krishna will give us the intelligence if we, if we, you know, are sincere in our devotional service, Krishna will, will give us the intelligence how to be confrontational without weakening our own position or situation. So you got to, you know, be Krishna conscious and practice and keep your wits about you and you'll figure out, just like, you know, I, mentioned about the, when they, I get confronted, I started by saying, oh, did they change the Supreme Court decision? You know, I don't write off, haul off it right away and tell them, you're an idiot, you don't know what you're talking about, because that's, you know, it's like waving a red flag in front of a bull. You don't want to do that. I, you try to do it in such a way, have your ammunition, you know, you got to have your ammunition, and you have to, you know, think, Krishna, you know, give you the intelligence, how to, how to say it in such a way that you're making your point, but in, in, in a way that doesn't offend them, but, you know, because they are human beings, and you know, some of them, like, they go, oh, you know? I mean, we've handed this to police officers and like that, and they go, "Oh, okay, you guys are good," you know. <laughs> I mean, and we've had we've we've a, a, a witness uh, police officers and even administrators doing a hundred eighty degree about face. You know, we just they they we give them this, they read it, they stand there for three four minutes, five minutes, read it. Oh, okay, okay, I guess you guys are okay, and they walk off, and that's it. You know, so you got to do it intelligently. Krishna will give you the intelligence how to do it. Yeah, so uh, Granthara Srimad Bhagavatam Kijai, Srila Prabhupada Kijai. Thank you.